Okay, so hello everyone, my name is Trent. Uh, just uh, showing you something I've been working on this morning. Uh, so what we've got here is a, um, an interface to the ECU in my car. It's, uh, we'll go up to the diagnostic interface and we'll actually allow you to uh, read values out of the car. There's all sorts of uh, values you can read out, things like RPM, engine temperature, injector pulse timing, all, all, you know, all sorts of, uh, of values you can read. To uh, just talk a little about what I've set up, I've, I've got it on a breadboard here because I've just been doing it as a little development prototype uh, just to uh, get it working as a proof of concept. So what I've got here, this uh, long black chip you can see here, that's uh, an Atmel AT Mega 8535 microcontroller. It's uh, basically a little computer on a chip which um, just um, you know, lets you write and run code. Um, pretty self-sufficient, you don't need to hook much up to it and that sort of thing, it uh, yeah, mostly looks after itself. But uh, I have got a few bits of supporting circuitry to make it uh, work better in my case. Uh, down here what we've got is what's called a, a Maxim Max 232. And this uh, does a voltage conversion to speak serial. So the, uh, the, the uh, Atmel microcontroller actually uses uh, 5 volts uh, to talk. But um, most serial devices such as a laptop and that sort of thing uh, use 12 volts. So this does a little conversion. And uh, the other thing is that the, the power in a car is uh, 12 to 14 volts, so we need a voltage uh, regulator. So we've got the voltage regulator here, it's hooked up to a fan, you can see it just in there. And, uh, I've also got some status lights, and um, the, uh, the yellow light tells us we've got the uh, 12 volt coming in, and the green tells us that the 5 volt is working. There's also a little red LED hidden in there, that tells us that uh, the batteries are connected incorrectly. And uh, over here we've also got an LCD display. It's uh, 20 characters wide by four lines high. And uh, the, uh, the backlight actually uses quite a lot of power, which is the main reason the fan is over here in the voltage regulator, because um, it pulls about 400 milliamps and the, uh, the voltage converter uh, gets a little bit hot when you're pulling that much current through it. So we've attached the fan that keeps it reasonably cold. Uh, still gets actually quite touch warm uh, when I'm running it from 12 volts. It's a little bit better. If you use a battery, I've got here a LiPo battery, it's only about 8 volts, it uh, doesn't really get warm once the fan is running on it, but uh, it certainly does uh, from 14 volts like your car, which is what this little power supply here is. So um, I've written some code for it, you can see it's actually running on the display here. Um, at the moment it's doing nothing because they're actually just on the uh, bench in my, uh, in my office, uh, but in a moment we'll go hook it up to the car and give it a try. Uh, some other interesting components we've got here is a, a programmer. Uh, it's called an ISP or in-system programming device. That plugs in via USB to my laptop. And uh, here I've got some code that I've written, you can see here. Uh, that's, that's written in C. And uh, I can program it, which I'm going to do just now. Upload the latest code, you can see it's blitzing along. And uh, just verifying the code's all written complete. And it's actually uh, reset, you can see that count is all new now. Um, so that's uh, pretty much good to go. What I'm going to do now is uh, head out to the car, plug it in, uh, test it out, and uh, see if it works. Okay, so we're out at my car now. So I've got a uh, 94 Magna wagon. It's uh, certainly not your typical kind of enthusiast car that might be interested in this sort of information. But uh, I'm a little bit crazy like that, so I like to uh, do it anyway. Uh, I do have a couple of friends though which are interested in doing this sort of thing um, with, with some more interesting cars. So just open up the car. We'll uh, pop down under the driver's bay here. This is actually where the, uh, the link up to the uh, to the ECU is located. Just pop everything down. Okay, so uh, just under the uh, driver's uh, seat, we've got here the uh, fuse box, which is where all the fuses for, for your car power is. But you'll notice there's also a white connector there. That's the actual ECU diagnostic uh, connector. So that's what we're going to hook up to my uh, microcontroller here. I've got a little cable I've made to do that, just with some spade plugs. So, um, uh, the first one we've got to connect here is a ground connection uh, to the car. And the second is uh, that we connect to ground is actually the diagnostic enable pin. So once these two pins I've just plugged in there are connected together, that actually puts the ECU into diagnostic mode so we can read this sort of information out of it. Uh, the other thing I've got to connect up is power. I've just uh, taken a fuse out of the fuse box, so I can use that to grab some power. Slightly naughty because I'm not actually putting a fuse on the power that uh, I'm pulling out for the device, but that's okay. We'll uh, certainly uh, fix that up in the future. And uh, last but not least is the actual uh, one we're going to get serial data from. That's this little brown wire here. That plugs up in this top right pin. There is actually a, a fourth pin in this ECU connector on this car, which I don't actually know what it does. Um, it's uh, actually quite hard to find information on this particular car and the diagnostic output. It's uh, very similar to a bunch of uh, cars with what's called a Diamond Star motor, which was a 
company started by Mitsubishi to get around some Japanese import laws. Um, it's actually wholly owned by Mitsubishi at the time. It was uh, Mitsubishi and I think it was Chrysler. I can't quite recall 100%. But uh, anyway, so uh, this car isn't documented very well, but it uh, actually uses the same interface as those cars, but they didn't have that extra pin, so haven't yet figured out what that does. Maybe it's something interesting, not sure. So um, we've got the car all hooked up. Just gonna uh, disarm the alarm and uh, turn on accessories and watch you have the, uh, the power come on. And uh, so we can see our microcontroller is booted up now. And um, it's counting away, not actually doing anything interesting right now. That's because the car isn't on and the ECU isn't uh, actually going to talk to us yet. So uh, we'll just start the car and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we started the car and I uh, can see we've got a lot more activity on the screen now. All of those cameras are going up. Those little cameras tell us uh, basically when I'm sending and receiving data on the serial port and when I send and uh, receive and request um, you know, a, a bite from the car, plus a little status indicator. But the uh, most interesting one is this e-value here. That actually uh, is the readout at the moment of the RPM of my car. And uh, you can see it's just hovering between a couple values there because the car is idling, the RPM isn't really changing, but it obviously vibrates a little bit for various uh, reasons. And uh, what we're going to do now is just uh, give a bit of a rev and see how the value changes. Uh, hopefully it'll all be working fine. We'll just try that now. And there we go. So I've uh, just put my hand on the accelerator a little and the value's gone up. See, it's actually going up numerical in, in hex values. And if we accelerate a bit more, it should continue to go up. And uh, so, yeah, we can see pretty much that it's working right now. So that's uh, the basic interface that I've got working. Uh, this is just the first version of the software. Obviously, um, you know, this is not a very interesting readout. It's a hex number. It's not actually telling me the RPM and the numbers that we'd find out. But it's also only telling me one value. There's actually, you know, many, uh, there's about uh, 30 different values you can read out of the ECU, um, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, we want to get all those uh, displayable in some form, but uh, as a first prototype, it definitely works and uh, going to work on writing some better software now. All right, uh, thanks very much. Cheers.